My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. If you've watched enough of my videos on this channel, you may be aware that there's a snake I've referenced in many of my previous videos. However, I haven't actually dedicated an episode to this species until now. The reason for that is because of one thing this snake has that stands between me and my safety. Venom. I know a lot about snakes, especially venomous species, but unfortunately, hands-on experience with them is what I lack. Interaction with a significantly venomous snake should always be done by an experienced professional, or at least, under the supervision of one. So let me introduce you to a man that has not just helped me with learning how to handle this venomous species, but has also dedicated nine years of his life to preserving these snakes through a business that specialized in snake relocation. This is Dave Jensen, the owner of Wasatch Snake Removal. And today, both he and I are going to teach you about Utah's most abundant venomous snake, the Great Basin Rattlesnake. So this is the Great Basin Rattlesnake. And this is Dave Jensen. The reason I have him with me here today is because this man probably has more experience with these snakes than probably anyone else I know because he spent so much time with them, pretty much for what, 40 plus years? Uh, 40 plus years, uh, 15 of it professionally as a relocator. How can you tell a rattlesnake from another snake? Now, the rattlesnake is the only snake uh, you have to really be conscious of because it is the only significantly venomous snake up here in northern Utah, and that's basically it. So pretty much if the snake does not have a rattle, that automatically means you have nothing to worry about, usually. The reason I say usually is because sometimes rattlesnakes can lose their rattle. So a rattlesnake's rattle is made of a substance called keratin, which is something we have in our bodies as well. Our fingernails, toenails, and our hair is primarily made of keratin. So you can see the rattle here. So this is a hollow structure, and uh, when they're rattled and shaken together in unison, they form a loose connection, and the sound of a rapid vibration causes that sound that we know as the sound of a rattling rattlesnake. It's just a warning device, a warning to potential predators, and contrary to what some people believe, snakes aren't out to get humans. The snake doesn't know what a human is. But snakes are in the middle of the food chain. Everything wants to eat them. And so when a snake sees a human, we're just a big potential, something that wants to eat it, okay? And all the snakes want to do is get away from us. They're not going to chase us. They're not going to do anything to us. And if you leave a snake alone, it'll leave you alone, guaranteed. The only, the only time a snake really has any reason to move toward you is because it's actually trying to move past you, and a lot of people mistake that for the snake actually trying to come to you. You should never have to be more afraid of this snake than they are of you. The pattern of a Great Basin Rattlesnake varies very greatly. We actually found two today, and the other one looks very different from this. The blotches are not really rings, they're actual full filled in blotches. Um, when they're babies, they look very different from when they are adults. Well, there's a snake out there that a lot of people mistake for rattlesnakes, mm -hmm. and that is the gopher snake, and which is just as common common as rattlesnakes, if anything, probably more common than rattlesnakes. They get about the same size, and they have much more rectangular blotches rather than uh, ovular blotches like you see on the rattlesnake. Best way to identify pretty much any snake is just to look at it enough. So to train your brain to see what's what, the best thing to do is to look at as many pictures as you can of a Great Basin rattlesnake and then a bunch of pictures of things that they can be mistaken for, like gopher snakes. So these guys are really cool in the way that they hunt their food. With a lot of snakes around here, they bite and they will hold on and start chewing and some of them will even constrict their prey. Rattlesnakes are very different because they have venom. So how do these guys hunt their prey? What do they eat and how do they do it? These guys are ambush predators, so they're uh, not gonna go on the hunt for their prey. They're not fast enough to chase down lizards or rodents. So what they do is they find themselves a good spot, usually next to a, a rodent trail where they have a good strong scent and then they sit and coil and ambush and wait for a critter to come by and then they strike out and then the animal has uh, a finite amount of time in which to try to escape, but it doesn't usually get very far. And then the snake follows the trail, finds the animal now deceased, and, and swallows it whole. And these snakes have an infrared device uh, called a L'Oreal pit. It's found between the nostril and the eyeball. And he can actually see a defined shape, even in pitch blackness, or if he's blindfolded, using his uh, L'Oreal pits and his infrared detection capabilities. And he can strike at it with remarkable accuracy. How do you keep a rattlesnake, or pretty much any snake, um, especially ones that like to eat rodents, out of your yard? The best way to keep snakes out of your yard is to keep rodents out of your yard. And the big mistakes that people make is they have a yard that's conducive to rodents wanting to nest. They have uh, thick shrubbery, they have debris, vegetation, that's out of control. They have piles of branches or wood piles, any place that rodents want to go. 
And uh, the other thing is pet food outside attracts rodents and bird seed. The rodents will come in looking for the bird seed, the snakes will come in looking for the rodents. So if you don't have rodents, you won't have snakes either, at least not for very long. These snakes are considered ovoviviparous, meaning they give birth to live young. And there are a lot of snakes out there that give birth to live young, just like us humans, like garter snakes and water snakes. However, these guys don't really do it quite the same way we do it. They kind of do an in-between of laying eggs and giving birth to live young. What they do is the female will actually produce eggs inside the body and then those snakes will actually hatch out of those eggs within the mother and then will be birthed as live young out of the mother and then the mother reabsorbs the eggs. For those of you snake lovers out there or for those of you who want to make sure you know where you're likely to see the snake so you don't run into it, I'm going to tell you how to find these snakes or where you're likely to see these snakes. Big piles of rocks, these guys always love. So basically during the spring, you're going to be seeing a bunch of rattlesnakes just all congregated together along with probably a few other snakes as well like whip snakes, racers, and gopher snakes. However, they can be found in a wide variety of habitats and elevations going all the way down to the very bottom desert floor basically just greasewood and sagebrush prairies all the way up to elevations upwards of 8,500 feet. Yeah I've found them as high as 9,000 feet before. Have you really? 9,000 feet that's crazy and the habitat up there is very very different. So when do you usually see these snakes out? So these guys have vertical pupils and usually that means they are nocturnal, meaning that they are out at night. However, they actually can be found at any time of the day. However, it's much more temperature based. Usually you want to be around when it's room temperature rather than whether it's bright or dark. These snakes can be found in a wide variety of conditions and a wide variety of habitats. So your chances of seeing this snake if you look enough are pretty good. This is by far the most common venomous snake in the state of Utah. You can find them all pretty much all over the western part portion of the state. Lastly, does this snake make a good pet? I think this is just a fun thing to do. Honestly, this is a snake I actually really want to keep as a pet someday. However, it is not legal in the state of Utah, so if you want a snake like this, the closest thing I can probably recommend to you is a bull snake. Those things are in captivity. I don't see them in pet stores at all. You probably have to go to, to like a specialty breeder. You'll have to go to a breeder mm -hmm. or probably an expo and you usually see them there. And bull snakes make excellent pets. And they look fairly similar. Venom-wise, you're not gonna die from the bite. Uh, you have snakes that are really toxic like the Mojave Green and the Great Basin is considered to be quite benign both in temperament and toxicity. These snakes are extremely docile. In fact, they're known as the teddy bears of the rattlesnake family. Most people that are bitten are going to be just fine. You go to the hospital, you get treatment, you get antivenom, and maybe just spend a day or two in the hospital and you're gonna be just fine. It is a hemotoxic venom, which means that it attacks red blood cells and tissues, and it does cause uh, tissue deaths. Time is of the essence if you're bitten by a snake, but you don't have to panic, you don't have to rush. You've got hours and hours, but the sooner the better. And don't do anything on your own. Don't use a tourniquet, don't use ice, don't use alcohol. Try to stay calm. Uh, keep the part of your body that's bitten elevated above your heart level if you possibly can. Get to medical attention. So thank you guys for so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Great Basin Rattlesnake. I'm so happy I finally got to shoot this with my friend Dave. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Peace out. Thanks. As we know, lots of people fear snakes. Maybe you're one of them. This is often caused by either lack of knowledge or misconceptions that have been passed on from one person to another. As a result, people don't know what to do when they're faced with a situation involving a snake. All they know is if it's dead, he just moved. then we're safe. But that's just not the case. This is why I'm here, to give you the knowledge needed to understand these reptiles and to break those misconceptions that can cause people to make a potentially dangerous mistake. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. Unfortunately, that sound sends chills through. He just bit the stick. Do you see that? <laughs> I missed it, actually. <laughs> so that sound sends... I saw a jolt out of the he's corner a, of my eye, but... He's, it... he's a little unhappy. We've, we've ruined his morning, but... Um... What the hell is the food service industry doing up here? Name because they have two heat-seeking pits on the front of their face, uh, behind the no or in front of the nostrils, and behind the... Or, I thought in front of they... the eyes, behind the nostril. What? I thought it was because when they ate cherries, they spit out the pits. <laughs> no? Okay. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, another fallacy dispelled. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new fallacies get made up every day. That's right. By one person. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> I do what I can. Let the medical professionals do the rest. And just to show that it's really not that bad, I'm actually going to... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're the man. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> um, Give you a dollar.